All right, so we've created a page. We've looked at various settings. There's one more screen of settings that we should look at. Uh, you can get to it two different ways. When we were here under the settings, I skipped page info because if you do go to page info, it's going to tell you this has moved. And where it takes you to is back on page on about. So this about screen is one more page of settings that we should take a look at. So you can get to it via settings, but it's going to be under page, about. Here we can edit these basic things about our page. So we've got category. Uh, also, all of these are fully editable again. This is like those six icons that we saw when we first set up the page, if you set it up with me. Um, so these are the different uh, food and beverage and all of that. So you can change that if you'd like. There's the name of your of the company on on Facebook. This is this is the name of the company, but it's not the address. Just like uh, the you the URL, like I said, that's changed right here. Web Facebook web address. This is the name of your site, how it appears. But um, for me, it let me change my name early on. Your customized address, and for everyone, it might not let you. So I'm not going to try because this is just my my test page. We have start date. Um, so this is just sort of like a fun thing that you can do for start page. Is this when this person was born, when this company was founded, when this organization was started, when we opened our doors, when we launched, whatever you want to write here, let's say founded, Victor's Bakery founded on uh, 2010, July uh, 22nd. So that's a little bit of information that will show up on the page, a little bit of branding to create a story, community and such. So uh, the, some of the deeper ideas of social media, because it relates to marketing, is to think again, uh, how are you reaching an audience? And this might be valuable collateral to build for an audience. The, the story of your company, its foundation, that sort of stuff, that the, the backstory of, of a company that people might care about, depending on your company. If, if it makes sense to do so, you can do so. It's not really detrimental. But if you add this, it is something that could be helpful. Address. I can add an address. The thing about address is, make note, when you add your address, it may take a few hours for it to update. And if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check in to your page using Facebook Places. So think about that. If you add an address here, let's say you add this as your home address suddenly you've made your home address visible to people on Facebook and it'll show up on the map on Facebook and if they see your business on Facebook on the map they can click check in they can go through that whole check in game on Facebook um, the The thing about the, the check-ins people who visit your page IRL what does IRL stand for? In real life people who visit your page in real life can virtually check into your page on their app, they will see your business, they'll click check in. That has various purposes. One is simply fun game. Someone checks into a place, it gives them, you know, uh, kudos or 
makes you feel cool. I checked into that place. Look at that. I'm on that mountain. Or I went into that restaurant. It's just kind of to show off. It's kind of like a fun game sort of thing. Um, the purpose for us as a as a as a business is data collection. People can check into your business. You'll get that notification. You will see their stats. You will see throughout the day the most the people that most check in the time is 1 p.m. The least amount of time during my opening business hours is 4 p.m. So I'm building a collection of data that I can use for various reasons, uh, purposes. So if I know after I have this active and let people check in for a few weeks or months or whatever, and it starts to tell me more accurately that these are the days and the times that people are visiting your establishment, I can do something about that, such as run an in-person, you know, an on-location type of uh, sale or event. If I'm seeing that more people are coming at that time, I can make a, a banner on the front door of my business that says, you know, come on in and enjoy, whatever. It's up to you to decide what you're doing with this data, but this is more data to collect. It doesn't make sense for everyone, of course. I don't have a business location. I sell my product that I make out of my own kitchen and I mail it out through the US. So it wouldn't make sense to put my home address here. But if it does make sense, you could. I'm located inside of another place. So I'm nearby a particular existent place. Or I have no street address. I'm in a city or a town. Facebook will automatically set up whatever the check-in system is. Yes. People will be able to see you within a few hours on the Facebook check-in system and they take care of it all. You just activate it and they use it. So if I'm traveling around the world, I could change my address. And yeah. You could do that as well. Um, and it could be useful or not, but it's just an extra feature. Uh, so that's address hours. If this makes sense for you, you can put operating hours. There are no hours. We're always open or we're permanently closed or selected hours. So you can go in there in detail and write when the days and times that your business is open. That way when someone is going to send a message and they've sent it after hours, you can reply with that auto reply. So if that makes sense to you, you can add hours. Short description, that's what we wrote early on when we set this all up. Remember I put in a web address there. Let me check this. I don't think it actually makes it active. It's just simply visible there. So I'm going to check that on a completely different browser where I'm not logged in. Yeah, only the website that I filled in here is active, that's just text. Although a person could, of course, copy that and, and choose to, to go there if they know how it works. But any links that you added there under short description are not active. In Pressum, we don't really have to worry about this. This is um, really only relevant to Germany, Austria, and Switzerland where this is sort of like for transparency purposes. This is certain countries are required by law to include a statement of the ownership of this web presence. So that's like this company, you know, vote for this politician funded by this organization. That's the Impressum. Not required for most countries, but if you are dealing in Austria, Germany, or Switzerland, or other countries, check your country, you have to add this text here. We don't, most likely don't have to, so I won't do anything here. Long description, we have uh, some sort of limit here, provide some info, include details like background, mission, award. So here's where I can write my mission statement, mission statement, and I'm not sure how big it can be, but I wouldn't stress too much about uh, putting in a lot. See right here, I'm just going on and on and on. It's a huge bio. No one's really going to read it, what I'm getting at is. You can write a lot here. No one's going to read it, really. 
this is valuable for keywords and such, so if people search, sure. But what's more valuable is the actual content that you will be creating. So don't stress too much about writing the perfect short description and long description. Write something here, but it's going to be about the posts you make every day, or the pictures you add once a week, or whatever, the content that you add to your page. So yes, so let me let me write a wall of text. There is a spot here to enter your mission statement, which is funny because it said you can also write your mission statement in your long description. So sure, write a mission statement. In short, the mission statement is what is the goal of your company. In the SEO class, we have an activity where we talk about mission statements and vision statements. In short, the mission statement is where does your company stand now? What are you about? Victor's Bakery is about connecting with passionate people that care about baking and blah, 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 blah. All of that stuff that a fancy marketing degree earns you. Your mission for your company. Again, that's also to help you get found. You can fill that in at some point. Edit it as many times as you want. There's probably a limit here, maybe. guess not. So you can write a huge life story here. Founded date. This is just a spot here for you to write another sort of bit of information. doesn't have to... I guess that should be a little bit more like a real date. Any awards, products, although this product here, let's say uh, chocolate chip cookies, uh, birthday cakes. So we've got a few products here. And these are pretty much for keywords to be found. Phone number to get in contact. Email address. So we add an email address. Some more contact info. For the email, I recommend to have something like sales at victorsbakery.com instead of victorsbakery at gmail.com. Do you see the difference? I recommend to have your company email address rather than a free Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, Cox email, whatever. I would recommend to be more professional to have an email address of your business. The Gmail one, Hotmail, all of that, those are free. Any person can create them, and therefore any spammer can create them. More legitimacy is to have your own um, real address like that. The catch there is that you usually need to pay for that. You need to get an email address over at GoDaddy or Bluehost or HostMonster or whatever. You need to pay for this. I don't know the prices. They range, in, they range a lot. $3 a month. $12 a month, I don't know, you have to look it up. But I would recommend to get this sort of address rather than the, rather the, rather than the free ones. And look at how specific it is. The local part of your email is not valid because it's too generic. pretty annoying. So if I do have a real sales at Victor's Bakery, it's not going to accept it. <coughs> Website, official page. Here's the question that was asked earlier about, I'm an official representative of some entity. So you have to click on that, select that entity, and now you're an official representation. It's not in the grandfather, you have to 
ones. Yeah, it might not be on the older ones, or it might not be on the particular. Some of these don't show up depending on your category, possibly. So you may or may ha you may have more or less of these settings than me. It depends on various factors, but that's the various uh, about settings. Any questions on that screen? You should have as much information as relevant, definitely. That that information will be found more by Facebook, however, than. Than, than Google. Um, this is to some degree, this information found here to some degree is known as the deep web or deep links. We may have heard some, I, some concepts of the, of the deep web or not actually I'm mixing it with the dark web, never mind. The deep web is simply that there is some content that is beyond the reaches of Google, of, of Bing, of Yahoo, um, stuff that you can't get to without, for example, signing in. So some information, like Facebook information oftentimes, Google will not find. This is deep web stuff. Uh, but it's still valuable because when you're in Facebook, when you're in Pinterest, people are going to be searching in that network to find this information. So if we go back to timeline, we have timeline about photos. So any photos you've uploaded will be listed here. You can have photo albums. Any likes that you've gotten will be listed here. If you take, if you take a look at likes, this is one way to start to build likes. Now, in short, with a lot of caveats, likes. Follows. So Twitter has follows, Instagram, Pinterest, all of these have follows. They have that one company or one person follows a company to keep up to date with their content. In short, likes are follows. We're going to put an asterisk because we're going to explain that a little later. And so on this page here, this screen here of likes, this will show me my stats. Oh, look at that. I'm doing 100% better than last week. And here, I can invite friends and family. So one tactic to get more likes for your business is say, hey, Bobby, like my page. Hey, Gabriel, like my page. Go to my friends here and say, Melanie and Cindy and Chad and Jorge and everyone, like my page. So then you'll start to build these likes. But because likes are like follows, I'll ask like I asked for other networks, are you really going to build a back, your business on the backs of your friends and family? They may not care about your product or your brand. Maybe they do, they do like it, but then are they going to want to constantly see your posts about sale this and sale that and donate this like that? Maybe. They're your friends after all. So. This is up to you if you want to invite. And you can click invite to everyone here. Don't feel bad if only three like you back. Because after more than 10 years of Facebook, and, and the people that you know may have been using it as long, after all of this time of people using Facebook, we started, we're starting to get numb to various aspects of it. Um, especially all of these friend request things. Remember? the great Farmville deluge of 2000-whatever, that everyone was playing Farmville and says, hey, help me grow my crops, and my cows need to be milked, and join me on Candy Crush, and all of that. And in the beginning it was fun and novel and, and all of that, and now we're numb to it. We, we click ignore, or we, just, or we don't do anything. So if you're going to be inviting all your friends and family that you used to invite to a variety of things, they may not do it. And that's okay, because probably you will not be building your business on the backs of your friends and family. We'll be talking about getting other likes. So, uh, strategies to get likes. Invite 
your friends. It's not one of the best ones, but it's one way to do it. This takes us back to the conundrum that we've talked about on previous social networks that uh, am I going to try to get likes before I have content? And as I said on the previous days, I would recommend you add content first before trying to get likes. So if we go back to the timeline, nothing is here yet, but I can add status updates, photo and video updates, and things that are not available as a personal profile, like offers, milestones, and such. Let's explore each of these a bit. Under status, I'm going to write something. We're on Facebook. Like us to keep up to date with blah blah blah. You have various uh, actions here at the bottom. You can further attach a picture or a video to your text. You just have to select it and upload it. You can uh, attach wh what are you doing or how are you feeling to the post. So you're feeling or you're celebrating, you're listening to, you're eating, dinner. Okay, well that sounds worthless. Can you possibly think of why would we add an interest to what you're posting? The optimal word is interest. Does that ring a bell from today? When we created the page at the beginning of the day, we had the option to select interests so that people can find our content. If I'm attaching one of these actions or emotions or whatever, this could help me um, also get found. Now it's not like the interests from the other screen where it's as specific as, as you might want it to be. But if you're selecting these sorts of things here, watching, yes I'm also watching the Los Angeles Angels versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. And everyone else that is doing that, that hasn't expressed that interest, I could get, uh, my content could be visible to people that are doing that. Yes, we're also watching Captain America. So people that have in, that have that that have expressed so that's nearly uh, half a billion people that have liked that. My content could be visible by those people. Not guaranteed, but could be visible. Yes? If somebody likes my page, what do they get for it? Did they get notified automatically of my posts, or what do they get for asterisk? Well, that's what that asterisk is going to be once we get to it, because it's oh. a big asterisk. So you can attach something there if you'd like for an action. Check in. Um, so here, if I've got a location, um, these guys closed actually, but if, uh, let's say we're doing some event, we're on Facebook, well let's say this is the kind of post that we're saying, uh, visit us uh, to get a free cupcake. What if we are doing an event at Southwestern College, we're a vendor there, we can attach a location that's a location that has a presence on Facebook. People that have liked our page could then see this post and see, oh, there at Southwestern College. That's two miles away. Let me go to it. So if location makes sense, you can attach that. Date and time. Um, don't bother with this one too much. It's not as useful as you might think. Uh, instead, we'll talk about uh, backdating and scheduling your posts. That's more valuable. So don't worry about this one too much. Yes? I 
remember Facebook used to give give you more um, credit in terms of ranking if you didn't automate posting. Hmm. So oh, that's interesting. Maybe that is a way to do it without using the other. But it doesn't exactly schedule it, it like the scheduler does. It just simply attaches a date and time to it, not necessarily scheduling it or backdating it. And then here we got narrow the potential field, target your audience. If you don't have that icon, that's because you didn't go to settings and you didn't activate news feed audience and visibility. Remember, this is off by default. I had suggested turn this on in your settings. The result of turning that on is that when you post something, you will be able to then target it, have these particular demographics see it more more you know targeting choose who can see this post in the newsfeed if someone engages with this post their friends may see it so we're saying these particular people when they visit the uh, when they see this page and, and 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 they have followed or they have liked they can see the post or or not and I have audience restrictions as well. Limit who can see these. Only people in these audiences you choose can see this post anywhere on Facebook. So if this particular post is really only for certain demographics, I can do here. These age ranges, genders, locations, and languages. And in theory, it'll reach a certain amount of people. That number is always going to change depending on many factors. But here, this post will only be visible by certain people. The news feed basically is that if someone liked my page, in theory, they will see my post, like a follow, in theory, asterisk. But if I want to then further target that, I can do this here. So if it makes sense for you to do this, I would. Uh, the clients that we are hired to work with, we often do this. We think about how can we reach the right people that are more apt to become a conversion, to click, to buy, to reply, to like. So it's all about targeting. We'll talk about boost posts later. That's a big discussion we'll get to. Who can see it here? Again, limiting it to demographics and such. That's tied in over to the targeting. I can simply click publish and everyone could see it. Or under the triangle, I can schedule it, backdate it, and save it as a draft. So if I haven't finished crafting this message, I can save it as a draft. If I save it as a draft, this will be listed under my publishing tools. Everything that I've published, everything that is a draft. edit it, although it's missing some of the, the features from this screen. So I'm going to write something and instead, well, I could do a backdate. Backdate your post so it appears in the past on your page timeline. Backdate a post unpublish immediately. So what this is saying is um, that if, uh, let's say, we're celebrating one year anniversary that we're on Facebook, and we were going to post something on that day, but we were so busy in the shop and we didn't do it. We can write here, hey everyone, today is our one year anniversary, but I'm doing it on Tuesday and I should have done it on Monday. I can backdate it. I can write, okay, well, actually, this was posted yesterday. I can backdate it. Sort of fudging the, fudging the numbers. Yes, this was posted on our anniversary. So that goes back in time. And that was posted yesterday. You, we would have, they would have to scroll through it to find them. It would be in it would be in the time of when it was posted, so it would it would go behind it would go before things of now. But it won't go out of 
Hmm, not exactly sure. I don't think so, because it has it happened it already happened. So I don't think Facebook shows it as the as one of the newest things anymore. The opposite of that is schedule. So this is how we can uh, set up a variety of posts. Uh, we should probably be posting on a regular basis. Every tutorial is going to tell you that, and we do this as well for clients. You should be posting once a week. That's a good, that's a good amount. If you do it more often, that's better. The reason to post content on a regular basis is that so it can be found by people, seen by people. If you post w one thing once a month or w one, whenever you remember every five weeks, your content won't be visible to as many people. So the more you post, the better. But the downside of that is you need to be posting. You need to be active. And then you forget this week. And you say, okay, I forgot this week, I'll do it next week. And then you forget that week, and then you're out of your habit and you don't do it. With schedule posts, we have the ability to select a date and time in the future when this post will appear. So I can spend one day on Saturday, you know, an hour, and think about a month's worth of posts. If I'm going to post once a week, I can possibly think of four things to post on that Saturday, and then uh, set them up here and say, well, this is going to be posted uh, next Monday at whatever. 8 a.m. and I'll schedule that and so it'll go off next Monday and then I'll set up another one and that's going to be set up in two Mondays 8 a.m. and it's scheduled. So I've got some content, pictures or posts or whatever, pictures or videos or just about anything and I'm scheduling that something for next week and in two weeks. And all of these drafts and schedule posts are found over at the publishing tools. Anything that I've drafted, anything that's scheduled, anything that um, has already been published, and there's a cool option here when we schedule posts. It used to be that a business would schedule something or publish something like a coupon. Sale this Saturday. Use this code. They publish it. A month later, that post is still there. A person would have to scroll back to find it, but it's still there. So a month later, your sale this Saturday coupon is still there. And a person could conceivably, and it definitely happens, try to use the coupon a month later when it's no longer really relevant or active. And the person's going to complain and say, I'm trying to use your coupon. It says, sale this Saturday. And you tell them, sir, but that was a month ago. And then they say, well, you didn't say it was expiring. You didn't say good until whenever. I forgot to write it. Well, here's Facebook helping us with that. Distribution schedule, which is a fancy way of saying, when does it expire? Select a date and time in the future when you want your post to stop showing. So I'm going to have this coupon from today until the end of the month. So this is relatively new. It happened definitely in the last year, maybe even newer than that. But uh, here, and this doesn't even have to be scheduled as in this is going to start tomorrow. It can start right now, because it chooses right now, and then it ends at some point. Schedule that, and write something. And so starting from right now and ending at the end of the month, and then this is no longer visible. So that coupon, that post, that relevant item is, is no longer on your page and you don't have to worry about it. This shows up again. Yes? So once it expires, it will not be shown on, other people, on people's timeline anymore, but it will still be visible on my page. Right? Not on your page either. It's not visible there either, but you will see it here under Publishing Tools, Expired Posts. So anything that has expired, you can still look at it again and republish it if you want to. So the, what's that? Those are nice tools. They need this to them. Exactly. Yeah. So all of this is here. Anything you've published, scheduled, in draft, or expired. Any videos you've uploaded. 
this is new also you can do live video you can you can upload a video you've recorded and now you've got this thing now they're challenging Periscope Periscope is the live video sharing app uh, so Facebook's got its own version on the app you activate live and you'll be able to broadcast live to all your all your followers at this point look at us in the kitchen we're having so much fun come come on in whatever you're gonna be live this is a brand new thing I think it's very cool uh, Periscope was one of the apps that did it before but now because Facebook wants to reach every thing for good and for bad they've got their own live thing as well YouTube has a live broadcasting feature and this might be one of the big breakthrough things now one of the new things you're gonna need to think about doing because plain old video is so passe and now you're gonna need to be live video Uh, so those are different things that we can do regarding posting. Again, I can add photos and video, upload photo, create a photo, create a slideshow so I can upload three to seven photos and it'll make a little video for me. Create a photo carousel. There's lots of ways to share this. So I can make these little slideshows. So I have a lot of uh, a lot of things that I can do, just like every other network. Instead of text, I can also add other interesting things. Something like a video may take a little more time to work with because video is is uh, takes up much more space than a long video. It may it may literally take a while. It may be slow to upload, and if someone has a slow internet connection, it may be slow for them to view. So be careful about video content because it has the downsides of it is it is more intensive. It's more to download. It may it requires a better connection. So if someone were to visit my, my page and I uploaded this content, you can see this video, so slideshow. You have these other, yes, the video, to create the video or just show the video? So I, I went to the, to the video and I just click play. I'm under photo and video and then it's create slideshow. So from here I, I have what kind of size, duration, and then at the bottom, add my pictures. I have offers and events, and I don't, sometimes I don't see all of these for every page, so if you don't have these, um, it might depend on what sort of page you created. Remember the on the about page, what kind of page. So I see offers, events, milestones, and notes. So offers are, can be pretty cool if, if you have this. An offer is a way for you to set up just something different than the regular post. Here, it's basically you're creating coupons in Facebook. This still is coupled with you have an existent website, an existent e-commerce system. You're selling on your website, or you're selling on eBay or Etsy, or 
Craigslist or something. And so here, it's rather a lot to set up. You can check it out your own, on your own. It's not that complicated, but you need to fill in what's the address of your product and what kind of offer are you doing, how would you describe it, show off a picture for it, and then you publish it. So what people will see when they see it on a regular computer, they will see everything you filled in and it'll say something like, you know, 20% off, get the offer. And all that is doing is guiding them back to the address that you have up here. So you still need your infrastructure on your website or Etsy or PayPal or whatever for it to fully work. If they're on their mobile device, it'll look like mobile friendly. But that's another thing you could share here. This is free. Again, not everyone has this. I'm not exactly sure why not everyone would have it, but I'm pretty sure it depends on the type of business you had selected. How did you get there? It's just right here. I'm about to share a status or a photo or an offer. Okay. Clicking there then gives me the whole setup. So there's discount code and terms and conditions to fill in, 5,000 characters, expiration date, so not everyone needs this, but this might be a thing to do. Coupons. Buy one, get one. Or free stuff. One way that I might use this free stuff is, again, uh, guide them back to my website. I could have a landing page on my website where I'm giving a free document. Let's say I'm Victor's Bakery, and I want to sell a particular form of cake. I can create a version of that cake as a recipe, as a PDF. I can make a nice one-page PDF in Illustrator or Photoshop or Word or PowerPoint, whatever. I can make a one-page recipe and have that on my website as a landing page. And through here, I can guide people to it. And the landing page is simply an address, I believe you mentioned this before, on your website, a specific page on your website that you can only get to by following a specific link. This page recipe offer.html would not be up on the menu of Victor's Bakery. The only way you can get to that page is via a tweet or a Facebook offer or a newsletter. That's a landing page basically. Getting to a having the user land on a page that is, you know, special VIP. And so here's how I could think of using this. I'm going to create an offer on my Facebook free stuff, a link to get that free recipe. On that free recipe, on that ad, I'm going to put an ad at the bottom and make it say, don't forget to buy the real thing here, and a link back to the shop page to buy the real one, because it never turns out the way the picture looks like when you make it yourself. And so that could be a way to possibly think of getting sales. Events, that's another thing you can look at on your own. This is something to, to create. It's, it's an event. You set up a picture, the date and the times, and the locations, and all of this stuff. And it can be a real or virtual event. For Victor's Bakery, I can think about creating an event that this Saturday, join us for Cupcake Appreciation Day. And fill it all in, date and time, category, description, tags, where do you go to get a ticket, or doesn't necessarily have to be a ticket, a ticket buying address. It could be your landing page to get people to go there. This creates an event then, which you can schedule it and so forth. So that's something you can't find on the other networks. You can do them in different ways with ancillary products, but with Facebook we've got these milestone. This is just another way to share something interesting. You're building a community. You are... You, know, you, no long, you, you, you not only have customers, but you have adherents, you have uh, acolytes, you have those that care about your business and follow it and swear by it or whatever. And so when you do these sorts of things like milestones, you build this community. You've got a community. Title. 
sold our one millionth millionth cookie when write a little story add a picture it's just another thing to post for people to like to reply to to share all of the actions from every other network likes replies comments right we're trying to get those on Twitter and, and Instagram and and, and uh, Facebook and all of them were trying to get community building, target audience. It's just another way to share this, share something. And then we've got Note. This is their this is their blog feature. This is their attempt to take on WordPress. So over on Note. You can create, you can add a picture, add a title, thoughts on Tornado Sugar, posted by Victor's Bakery, write something, and you have various uh, formatting tools. You can attach a picture, so you can add pictures within the post itself. You can add headings and bullet points and quotes. So let's say, you know, I'm adding a heading here. This is something. I'm adding regular text. Here's another heading. I'm going to say some more stuff. Then I'm going to add some bullet points. So it, it's a blog. I can write no limit, basically a huge blog. Make it public. Publish it. So I publish this. Looks a little bit different than the other kinds of posts. Gives you more of a preview. See more. And the person will see it like this. Just another way to share your content where people can like, comment, and share. How did you get to notes? It should be, uh, as you're posting here, under Offers Events, and it should be under Note. If it's not there, again, sometimes some of these features are not a visible for everyone. It's, it's kind of odd what is and what isn't, but that's going to depend on if it's an older profile or perhaps if what sort of um, genre you've set yourself into. So under note, uh, other things I can do here, I'm writing and then I can select and then I have make that bold. Or italics. Or make it a link. So I can add links within this. So just another another thing to share, more content. Not just text updates. All of that in the hopes of getting likes or I guess haha's or angries. There's more than likes now, if you didn't know. Facebook's had likes for 10 years, and now there's also loves, and ha-has, and wows, and sads, and angries. For a long time, people were saying, well, there's likes. Can we have unlikes, the thumbs down? And Facebook added these instead. So the closest thing to an unlike, I guess, is an angry. Hopefully, you don't get a lot of angries. And then comments and shares. This is something uh, so John sees my post, they want to share it. And so the purpose of that, just like Twitter, like a retweet, is that my content gets shown to more people. I have seven likes, so in theory seven people can see my my stuff. But one of those seven had 700 connections, and they shared it, so I've possibly potentially reached 707.
So the what to post. How to post, I can explain that, of course. What to post, that's going to depend on you. You can, of course, look up many articles, and everyone's going to have an opinion of what to post. And they're all right, and they're all wrong, because it depends on your company, your brand, your product. So you can definitely look up a bunch of this information and see how it goes for you, but you won't know how is it going until you try it. I'm going to try, I'm going to make a goal for myself to post one of these types of things. I'm going to try to post one of these types of things at least. And maybe it'll start to determine what works. And what works will be found under your insights. It'll start to tell you here activity that has happened in impressions and look at this they call it reach actually so you're gonna see look at this this reached this number of people reach and engagements impressions conversions so one whole person saw this the one follower but he didn't click on it so that's stuff many of these things that you'll see under insights I'll show insights in more detail on a client that, that does have activity after the break but under insights this is going to be valuable to see okay this one worked but this one didn't this one these two are, are almost the same but what was what was different oh I targeted this one but not that one this one was a picture this one was a note this one was a video which one which one worked better so the more of these things that you post at different days and times, the more you can figure out what will possibly work in the future. We're going to take a break in just a moment to talk about uh, other important aspects here, but any questions so far? Before we take the break, let me make you aware of this website, Social Media Examiner. Dot com. The website, yes. Um, there are many great websites out there to keep up to date with social media. This is one of them. Socialmediaexaminer.com. They publish blog posts just about every day. They have a free marketing industry report that you can get, 52 pages. Um, look at what they've done here. The very first thing, well actually the very first thing which I already closed was a pop-up that says, why not subscribe? I think it's obtrusive, but it works. That's one thing to think about on your website, have some way to subscribe. If not, look at this. They are giving away something for free. The catch is, is, give us your email. So on your website, one way to start to build a database of interested potential clients is to give something for free uh, in exchange for an email. How you set that up, we can't talk about in this class. It's out of our scope. You educate yourself. Think about that on my website. Can I give something away for free that the only way they can get it is by giving me their email? Some amount of people will not. They don't want to give you an email. But some amount of people will. And those people could be more people to market to, more people to send an email once in a while to, that you can set up to say, hey, we're having a sale. You are interested in this. You might be interested in that. This obviously takes more time and effort, which we don't have the time for in this class. But think about that. So what I was going to get at was, check out socialmediaexaminer.com, how to measure your LinkedIn activities, published today. Three ways to use psychology in your social media marketing. That sounds interesting. Let's check that out here. Give gifts to encourage responses. In other words, bribes. Give gifts. Free shorts. Shop now. Use emotional triggers to create authentic connections. Laughter is one of the most effective tools for forming a strong emotional bond with people. Like Chipotle does here, you can use wit and humor to connect with their Twitter followers. The Mexican Grill has a deep understanding of their target audience and the kind of humor they will likely appreciate. This helps them avoid using humor that their followers might find offensive or lame. 
So counting burritos in your head is the best way to pass the time in line. Chipotle, hashtag Chipotle 101. Feelings are hard to share, bowls are not. Man wraps himself in tortilla. What happens next will shock you. How much should each item cost on a dollar breakfast menu? One dollar, two dollars, thirteen dollars, one hundred and twelve yen. So funny stuff often works in social media, which of course depends on your target audience. If you are a tax preparer, you probably shouldn't be joking a lot about money and such. If you're doing my taxes, so always think about your target audience. Partner with trusted authorities to build credibility. So again, lots of uh, lots of advice from this website. Something new every day. People's comments. Um, this is a place that I like to read the comments at. Comments can be can easily get out of hand and be very negative. But I believe they they moderate the comments here so that good comments stick around. And the point of here is that people could be mentioning stuff and say, Hey, why don't write about this? Think about that. Check out this link. So. I do like to look at comments on socialmediaexaminer.com. How to add a services section to your Facebook page. That might be valuable. Using LinkedIn to connect with prospects. And you've also got search at the top right, so if you want to hear about this, this Periscope thing, you might look that up six ways to use Periscope for your business. Periscope broadcasts natively in Twitter. So again, we have a five-week-long class. I could teach five weeks non-stop on Facebook, five weeks non-stop on YouTube. All of these networks have a lot of nuances and things that we can do. Um, the problem is, what are you trying to do online? One size doesn't fit all. So that's why I'm showing this site, and there's many of them out there to keep up to date with this, to get ideas, to educate yourself further from the class. Notice this is something pretty novel that they do here. You can listen to this article. They took the extra time to create this as an audio file. Welcome to the Social Media Examiner Show, helping you thrive in the social media jungle. And now, here's your host, Chelsea. Hey there, welcome to today's show. This episode comes to us from Cass McCullough and is sponsored by the Social Media Success Summit. Well, sponsored by the Social Media Success Summit. So these many things to many angles and things to think about, but okay, why did they go through the trouble of also recording this? Someone might not be able to read it at that moment. Notice it's downloadable, so I can maybe download it to my phone and listen to it on the commute and uh, get that information that way. And they're going to pepper in, most likely, ads, obtrusive or not, with, through in the broadcast, throughout the broadcast, just like in a real radio show. So that could be a, a reason why to also have this as an audio version of the part of the of the article. Obviously, it takes much more work, and I'm already busy on Twitter and Facebook to record something. But you could turn on your phone and just start talking, and there you have a show. You have a podcast. Have you heard of that term, podcasts? That's a whole other brave new world of social media. Podcasts are basically on-demand radio shows. Whereas a traditional show, you have to tune in at a certain day and time to listen in. A podcast usually is released at some point, and then it automatically downloads to your phone, to your device, to your computer, so you can hear it at your leisure. They're very popular. They take that effort, though, of setting up, recording it, editing it, uploading it, but it could be valuable. Just out of curiosity, what if I search podcast? here. Podcasts. Why a podcasting is trending. Is blogging dead? How to manage a podcast. This one's pretty new. A checklist.
All right, so uh, that's that site, socialmediaexaminer.com. Let's take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk about this lingering asterisk here. It's 8.40. Uh, we'll be back at 8.50.